Hello, I'm Jim Marino and I'm going to introduce you to Trinity Orthopedics bone harvesting device which is intended for a minimally invasive harvesting of autologous bones. The device comes in a sterile blister pack form. It is for single patient use. The device uh, has a stainless steel thin wall shaft which is inserted into the cantless bone. It has a slightly castellated distal feature on the tip which is intended to microfracture cantless bone. It is not intended for penetrating cortical bone. There are small uh, fenestrations or windows that allow you to see the cancellous material within the device. The device comes for single patient use in a box. When the box is opened, there will be detailed instructions for use which are actually uh, reasonably thorough in describing the use of the device including recommended sites for autologous bone harvesting. The Expiration date is also listed on the peel pack. The device comes in seven and in nine millimeter diameters. Now I'm going to demonstrate the use of the device. The device, after it's been delivered sterilely to the operative field, will have the extrusion or plunger uh, plastic element already contained within. Release the plunger. The plunger is removed and carefully retained in the operative table area because it's important for extracting the cancellous bone from your harvest site. Okay, on the back of the device you can see embossing and color designated indicators regarding the two primary positions for operating the device. Counterclockwise rotation of the upper segment of the handle relative to the lower segment of the handle is the open position. Clockwise rotation of the upper segment relative to the lower segment is the closed or locked closed position. We're going to introduce the device into the cancellous bone in the counterclockwise open position and we're going to have it in the open locked position which involves advancing the upper segment of the device a few millimeters relative to the lower segment. In this position the upper segment will control the entire device as long as there's forward pressure. We will then use this piece of floral foam to demonstrate harvesting. The tip of the device has small castellated surfaces along the uh, perimeter. The device is beveled inward to minimize the risk of penetrating through the posterior segments of the harvested cancellous bone or the inner table of the iliac crest. We place the device on the surface of the cortically denuded bone and we oscillate it into the cancellous material to a depth of approximately five centimeters which is designated with two small arrows on the device using laser marking. At this point we are going to lock and close the device. We'll do that by rotating the upper segment relative to the lower segment into a fully locked or clockwise position. Now we're ready to extract the, the cancellous bone and the device from the bone and we do that by rotating and pulling but always rotating in a clockwise manner. So we have removed the uh, device from the patient's cancellous uh, bone cavity and we're ready now to extract the cancellous bone which is contained within. Uh, you can visualize that through the lowest window, if you will, on the side of the device. We, in order to remove the device, we need to move it to the fully open position. That means rotating the upper segment of the handle in a counterclockwise manner it exposes the green in between the two segments and we'll now advance it forward a few millimeters. It is in the open lock position. At this point, we take our sterile plunger, insert it through the back of the handle and deliver the cancellous bone into a medicine cup or some other suitable container. That process is repeated. We can go through the exact same hole that we went through in a different direction oscillating as we advance the device back and forth, stabilizing the lower segment of the handle, rotating the upper segment of the handle to a locked, fully closed position, and then extracting by rotating clockwise while we pull the handle out of the cancellous bone. 
We can again see the cancellous bone in the lower fenestration of the device's shaft. We now again have to rotate to the fully open position. We rotate it fully counterclockwise. We want to lock it in the open position. We are now ready to insert our plunger and deliver the cancellous bone. And this can be repeated at the site in various directions, producing cylindrical cancellous bone of approximately five centimeters length. For prone patients, the most probable site for harvesting a bone is from the posterior superior iliac spine. You can see in this area of our saw bones, we've denuded the cortical bone generously. One doesn't need this much cortical removal in order to introduce the harvester. One would make a small cortical defect in the upper portion of the posterior iliac crest, and the harvester would then be introduced at varying angles through that cortical defect to harvest bone. For lateral decubitus and supine position patients, I would highly recommend one consider the proximal tibia. Now, for the lateral decubitus patient, one would harvest bone from the proximal tibia in the lateral area, just lateral to the tibial tubercle. One can see that the tibial tubercle is at least one and a half centimeters to two centimeters below the tibial plateau, even in this very small anatomical example. The harvester is introduced being aware of the joint line level, and one wants to stay about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half away from the joint line in introducing the harvester. In a fully supine patient, as opposed to the lateral decubitus patient, I would recommend an incision just medial to the tibial tubercle, where one only has to penetrate the skin and minimal subcutaneous tissue before accessing the periosteum. A small cortical periosteal flap, proximally based, can be facilitated with a capner gouge and a small mallet, and the device can be introduced in various angles to harvest as much as 15 centimeters, cubic centimeters, of cancellous bone from the proximal tibia. Uh, for those that are not particularly familiar with this surface anatomy, uh, you can see here on my right uh, lower extremity that I've marked with pen the inferior aspect of the patella, the tibial tubercle, Gertie's tubercle, and then the lateral joint and medial joint line. The incisions for the harvesting of cancellous bone from the proximal tibia can be between the tibial tubercle and Gertie's tubercle, right in this area, or immediately medial to the tibial tubercle. And again, the incision need not be made much longer than is uh, indicated with these ink lines. Subcutaneous approaches to the proximal tibia a very safe distance away from the joint line.